video was developed to provide you, the very small meat processor, with some examples of passive plan implementation, including how to monitor critical control points, or CCPs, plus how to do process verification, pre-shipment review, and in general, how to manage the records that will be generated with the HACCP process. This video will not discuss HACCP plan writing, and it is assumed that you have written your plan before you watch this video. Not all CCPs shown in this video will apply to your operation, and not all of every company's CCPs will be shown in this video. Only your hazard analysis of your operation can determine what is needed for your HACCP plan. Through hazard analysis, Shad Meats Incorporated has identified several processing steps as CCPs in their HACCP plan, such as CCP1, cooking, smoking, CCP2, Listeria monocytogenes control. Shad Meats has additional CCPs in their plan, which are not demonstrated in this video. Please pause the tape now to find figures two and three in the accompanying manual. Critical limits for each CCP seen in the second column of Form B include CCP1, minimum of 148 degrees Fahrenheit internal ham temperature. CCP2, minimum of 160 degrees Fahrenheit water temperature in shrink tank. Monitoring procedures for CCP1 include checking final internal ham temperature in the geometric center of the largest ham at the end of the cooking cycle using two thermometers, a digital recording thermometer, and a continuous chart recording probe. Monitoring procedures for CCP2 involve monitoring the water temperature of the shrink tank at the beginning and end of the packaging process. To monitor CCP1, the smokehouse operator watches for the digital display on the front of the house to reach 153 degrees Fahrenheit. At this point, the employee compares the digital reading to temperature indicated by the chart recorder on the side of the house and records the date, time, digital temperature, and initials the record, all on the same recording chart paper. With an internal temperature recording chart, it is possible to monitor the length of time that the internal product temperature was at a selected temperature. For example, Shad Meats has set 148 degrees Fahrenheit as their critical limit based on processing history, that the interior of each ham has been held at 140 degrees Fahrenheit or higher for at least 30 minutes. This time temperature combination meets the salmonella performance standards. You should also note that Shad Meats has set 153 degrees Fahrenheit as their company target for an endpoint cooking temperature to minimize deviations from their critical limit. For CCP2, this employee checks the water temperature of the shrink tank at the beginning and end of ham packaging and records both temperatures on a label that is added to the recording chart. While the critical limit is 160 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, this company has a company target for water temperature of 190 degrees Fahrenheit. Verification is to a HACCP plan what monitoring is to a CCP. The major points of HACCP plan verification include review of the monitoring record, review of the person doing the monitoring or checking the checker, verification of instrument accuracy. Another employee verifies the accuracy of the two internal probes by checking the internal temperature with a third thermometer, and she records this third temperature on the recording chart. We're going to review the record that was made this morning, and the first thing that I'm going to do is I've had a couple of rubber stamps made, and I'm going to stamp them. One is a reviewed by. That means I'm reviewing the record itself. The other one is a ship pre-shipment release, which we'll be using at a later time. The, the four things that I'm going to review for are that we have met our critical limit, the date and time that that record was made, and that the person that made the record put their initials there. Those four things are on that record. I am going to sign off by putting my initials on the reviewed by. I'm going to put today's date and the current time. 
This record will now sit until we actually package the product. At the same time that I do this, I will also get what was packaged the previous day and I will see that I have reviewed that record just like I did on today's record. I will turn the record over and I have labels which also contain a record. This is our critical control point at the um, surface heat temperature and I review it for the date, start and finish time in the critical control point and if it meets the critical limit I will also mark that reviewed and I will put today's date on that when I'm actually reviewing it. This record goes onto the smokehouse chart which contains my original record at the cooking step. We now have the second record here and complete and this is when I would actually fill out the pre-shipment review. Both my critical control points have been met. I am going to say I release the product. It is ready to go to the consumer. I will put my initials, today's date, and the current time. In addition, I also record the number of pieces that were included in that lot, which were on the initial record that we had and are also on the packaging record, so I can identify any of the product that's associated with this lot and these two critical control points. This lot of fully cooked hams is identified by the numbers 00002, which is the 21st day after packaging or the second day of the year 2000. January 2nd is converted to a Julian date, and the first two zeros represent the year 2000. This date is used to signal the last date that this lot of product may be shipped from their plant. The accuracy of your records is as important as meeting your critical limits. By having verifiable and accurate records, you are ensuring that you have done everything possible to put the safest meat products on the market. Through hazard analysis, this very small establishment, Carly's Bratwurst, has identified the grinding step as a critical control point for a biological hazard in their raw ground product HACCP plan. Their critical limit for this CCP is seen in the second column of Form B, 50 degrees Fahrenheit maximum internal ground meat temperature. Monitoring procedures for CCP-1 involve checking ground product temperature one per batch at the time of mixing. The designated employee, in this case the person mixing the bratwurst, monitors this CCP which involves temperature measurement using a dial thermometer and recording the temperature on the monitoring form in figure nine. On another day, the designated employee notices a deviation from the critical limits of their HACCP plan. This means that the establishment must follow the corrective actions addressed on form B, including cause of the deviation identified and eliminated, processing room warmer than normal because refrigeration unit is in defrost cycle, CCP is under control after corrective action taken as room temperature is monitored for three days. Measures to prevent recurrence of deviation include modifying plan to include checking room and ground meat temperatures before mixing. Procedures to prevent distribution of adulterated product. Entire lot moved to another cooler until meat temperature reaches 40 degrees Fahrenheit or less. According to this plant's HACCP plan, Verification will occur once per day, performed by a second employee. Verification in this establishment involves both checking the checker and checking the records for accuracy and completeness. Verification is documented in this operation on the temperature monitoring form. Note that the second employee uses a red ink pen for verification, which is understood to only be used by that person. Calibration results of thermometers used in this HACCP plan are to be documented at the bottom of the temperature monitoring form. For thermometers used in colder temperature ranges, ice water is used for calibration. Prior to shipment, every lot of product produced under HACCP must go through a pre-shipment review process. In this operation, the designated employee reviews all records related to this lot of bratwurst to determine that all records, including monitoring, corrective actions, verification, etc., 
have been properly completed and that no deviations to critical limits have occurred. Note that the person doing the pre-shipment review is the same person who did the monitoring, which is not unusual for very small meat plants with very few employees. This lot of bratwurst is identified by the date of processing, so December 13, 1999 is coded as 91213. A CCP for product temperature during processing might also be appropriate for raw, not ground process categories. Through hazard analysis, this very small establishment, the OSU Meat Lab, has identified the final trim step as a critical control point for a biological hazard in their pork slaughter HACCP plan. Pause tape here to find figure 11 in accompanying manual. Their critical limit for this CCP seen in the second column of form B, figure 12, is zero tolerance for fecal, ingesta, and milk contamination. Monitoring procedures for CCP-1 involve visually checking each carcass for fecal, ingesta, and milk contamination at the final trim step. As hogs are slaughtered, the date, time, lot number, and tag or tattoo number is entered into the monitoring log. The designated employee monitors this CCP by carefully looking over each carcass for fecal, ingesta, and milk contamination. Seeing none, this employee records on monitoring log the time of check, Y or N, for yes or no, under the visible contamination column, and initials the record. According to this HACCP plan, verification will occur daily, performed by a second employee. Verification in this establishment involves both checking the checker and checking the records for accuracy and completeness. Verification is documented in this operation on the monitoring form. Prior to shipment, a third employee does the pre-shipment review by reviewing all records related to all carcasses processed each day to determine that all records, including monitoring, corrective actions, verification, etc., have been properly completed and that no deviations to critical limits have occurred. The person doing the pre-shipment review also initials carcass tags, which are pinned on each carcass side. Each pork carcass is assigned a different lot number based upon the order that animals were slaughtered and the slaughter date. It is hoped that the HACCP implementation demonstrations that you have just observed on this video will help you to feel more comfortable with the HACCP process and give you ideas for your own HACCP program. For additional examples and information, we encourage you to spend some additional time with the accompanying manual.